Eu. We got a mobile pickup order. Save the turtles. Hermes bag. Yeah, Hermes knockoff. <laughs> Welcome to another vlog. Today uh, is Sunday and my weeks kind of start on Sunday like my work week so and Sundays are normally we're off so just wanted to film a little off day vlog start of the week and talk about what I've been reading. This is my current physical read. Uh, this is a memoir by Jill Duggar which is she's a part of the Duggar family which 19 Kids and Counting. I was a big fan growing up. I watched this with my family. Um, and they're very problematic. Surprise, surprise. Uh, but I watched the documentary last year, I think is when it came out, of Shiny Happy People, which kind of dives into the dark side and like the really, really bad stuff with the IBLP, which is like the organization that their family was like underneath. And this is kind of like Jill's tell all or like her experience in the family and like realizing that it was really toxic and bad for them. Um, I'm like halfway through it. It's pretty short. It was really, it's really good. I'm really having a good time with it. Um, I think that she covers a lot of really good topics like misogynistic um, kind of pyramids within religion and like how that can affect women, especially like restrictive parents and how that affects children and how it affects affected them growing up and kind of like unlearning a lot of what she was taught and how much it hurt having to like distance herself from her family but in the long run how good it was for her um so that's my physical read right now audiobook wise a couple different things we got going on per usual i am in a lot of different book clubs so um audiobook Number one that I've been working on is the second book in the Aragon series, Eldest, or in the Inheritance series is what it's called. I just call it Aragon because that's the first one. But we're doing like a little side book club, which is like where we read nostalgic series. Also, if you see my couch like dismantled with mag it's because we're washing our cushions right now. Um, so we're reading that one about 25% of the way through that one. Um, honestly, it's a little bit boring. Just going to be real. Um, I don't remember a lot of what happened in this series when I read it when I was a kid. So I don't have a ton of the nostalgia attached to it. So that might also be why. I mean, it's not bad, especially given the fact that Christopher Poloni was like 15 when he wrote it, which is really impressive. But 
it's dragging a little bit at the beginning of the second one. So hopefully it picks up soon. I just don't really remember what happens. Um, the other audiobook that I'm reading right now is Caraval. I know that this one's very popular, so I'm curious to see if it lives up to the hype. Um, I'm catching on late because it's like, I believe it's a YA series. And essentially you're following these two sisters. Um, they are raised by their dad, who's like the worst person ever. He's like in a position of power, but he treats them very poorly. Their mom ran away allegedly and just left them. I'm assuming that's gonna come back around and probably later on it's like she, they thought she just left them but maybe something else is going on. Um, but there's like this mystery island ran by this guy named Legend and he grants like wishes like if you win this game called Caraval. So it's like a game they do. So it's like a game competition type book. It's a series. I think there's three books. Um, she's also the same author that wrote the Once Upon a Broken Heart books. And it's very like fairy tale esque Like it feels like I'm reading like a Disney retelling, like darker though. Um, and there's like arranged marriage, things like that. The main character is interesting. I like her so far. I'm probably like halfway through that one. And as of right now, I would pick up the next one. So I like the writing style. I've never read from this author before. And then lastly, I am very excited to say I will be starting a reread of the Twilight series soon. Very excited um, with some of our friends. Um, I'm a big Twilight fan. I am not ashamed. I was a Twilight girl and I still am. Um, one thing that is funny is I have like uh, the box set of the white ones, the collector's edition. And I don't want to mess them up, so I ordered <laughs> really cheap copies off of Pango Books, and I'm waiting on those to come in so I can like really annotate them, like like hardcore, because I've never done that before with the Twilight series, even though I've been a fan for so long. So that's gonna be fun. Excited for that. Don't know when I'm gonna start that, but probably just whenever they come in. Um, so yeah, that's the reading plans right now. Um, I'll probably finish this book in this vlog since I'm like already halfway through it. It's pretty short. Um, would definitely recommend this so far, like very, very good. Um, I just finished Children of Time by Adrian Chiskovsky, and I talk about that in a monthly wrap up I'm about to post on TikTok, which by the way, you should follow me on TikTok if you don't already. I started using it a lot more. So I'm not gonna go super in depth, but I absolutely love that. It was really great. And I'm not usually a big sci-fi girl, but it's probably the first sci-fi ever maybe that I've rated five stars. Um, I think it's really, really, intricate and the author does a lot of cool stuff with um kind of like an overview on empathy and like sentience like how you treat animals and things like that which i'm a fan of so also this is random but i picked this up at Publix. uh these are my favorite these little kombucha drinks the hum ones i really like the ones in the can this is a new one strawberry blossom i hadn't tried it yet it's really good hello Wow, show me. Scrooge my duck, bitch. Can I see? Wow. <laughs> Hello. We need to go talk to the council. Sir, no. what, are, what are your thoughts? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give us your debrief on episode one. Um, it's a lot going on. Okay, what are your pros and cons? Uh, what should I start with? <laughs> uh, the cons. The cons. Um, so Sokka needs more character development. Okay. Um. Not, not quite as sassy. Not, not quite as sassy. It is more serious show, but. Um, I want to see, hopefully it evolves into more, like, them actually, like, moving, using martial arts to use the bending. More eloquent more. bending. Yeah. Right, right, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, they're I taking it. out scenes that, and they're changing scenes that I'm not really fond of. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much the pros. Pros. Cons were the flying, the airbending oh, flying. Oh yeah, the very beginning with Aang just like, like, like I'm flying up and down. No, 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 that was that was not it. Pros. And that sucks because it was the very beginning. Yeah, you're um, right. You're right. Pros, the effects are good. Um, any anything that's better than the Nickelodeon movie is good. Um, <laughs> casting is good in my opinion. Um, Ring Ren's perfect. All right. Uh, I like the like so far all of like the like places where like the 
buildings are at, like the Air Temple, the the whatever, every all the places they look, they look pretty good. All right, cool. So, thank you, thank good. you. Episode one. Where is your friend? You said he's a Where is the Avatar? Yeah. <laughs> Episode two, much better. I think. Gotten better, Got, getting better. I like more, more with Sokka. More <laughs> Koshi warriors were great. Oh god, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Third episode was starting. Um, that moment was really cool. We're getting, we're getting there. I, I'd say it's improving. Um, out that 10. one, that one is a seven out of ten. Okay, seven out of ten. Yeah. Coleman, episode three. Oh my bad. Um, it was about the same as episode two, episode three. Azula was cool. She Had grew doubts. on you. She grew on me. Yeah. Uh, May is that her name? May and Tylee. Tylee. Yeah, they were they were pretty cool. Um, what is it? Um, <laughs> the characters are a little like tell me like here is everything just crammed into one. You know, they're trying to cram all these characters into like three episodes into one kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. But overall. Alright, it's good. You said Boomy's mid. Boomy's kind of mid. No, no, I mean. <laughs> Boomy kind of mid. <laughs> Secret tunnel was great. It was just a the little song bit. was great. It's a that they're not doing anything with Aang and Katara and this just I think that Uncle Aro was a lot cooler already. Yeah. I don't know. We're is getting it, we're getting there. How many episodes is there? Uh it's all of book one, so it's definitely gonna be like I mean, we're already halfway through. We're gonna get this blue spirit, I know that, but I don't know. You know. It's very rushed. It is very rushed. I was hoping I wasn't the only one. <laughs> Overall thoughts? I mean, expectations are high. It's yeah. just, it, it's, 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 it's good. It's good. It's not great, but it's good. I agree. Hunter? Enjoyable. See? It's enjoyable, but there's there's things I would love to change. It feels very rushed. Yeah. Like, if they took their time, people would be like, oh, I can't wait till it gets to this part, or yeah. I can't wait till it gets to this part. But meanwhile, we'll be saying that, that and then the part will be shown. I just feel like there's no, there's no need to just rush it, you know? Like... Yeah. They could have took. They could have done a whole episode of just Jet. You know what I mean? No. Yes. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> My cabbages. Today I was able to read a lot more of Counting the Cost. I literally only have like 20 pages left, 30 pages left probably. Um, I might get to finishing this tonight or it might be tomorrow when I finish this. Um, very good. They honestly, their family has been through so much and like it was really, really cool to read her story and like how she like gained her independence back and how she had her own personal trauma and convictions and like going through therapy 
And honestly, I think that therapy, especially in Christian households, is still very taboo. Um, so I really appreciate how she talks about that impacted her and her family and how it was like taboo for her to step into that and actually get help um, with the way that she was raised and the way that she was feeling about things. So I really liked that section reading about that. So we're almost done with this. Um, I actually borrowed this from a friend. They brought it for me um, today. Foe by Ian Reed. Let me know if you've read it. I don't think I'll get to starting this in this vlog, but definitely will start this in the future, maybe next week. Um, got Just got home from work, today's Monday. Um, yeah, that's really it. Last night, I have clips from last night, but we had a lot of fun going to my brother and his fiance's house and watching the first four episodes of the Avatar show. I was actually like, I do feel like, you know, we had some a lot of critiques because we grew up on it. And so like, it's natural. We're gonna compare things to the cartoon, which is what we grew up watching. But overall, I actually was pretty impressed. I thought it was really good. Um, it There was things obviously that bothered me and like a couple things I would have done differently. It's having to move really quickly because there's only eight episodes in this season and um, the first season of the animated show had like 24 episodes. And I mean, granted they were a lot shorter episodes. These are about an hour long each, but still like the pacing's gonna have to be different because it's a different type of show. So I'm not really that mad about that. Um, I think it's overall pretty good. So curious what you guys think if you've watched it, but now I think I'm gonna go and play some of my game and make some tea. So yeah. What you reading? What's that? Super Saiyan. Who are the Super Saiyans? Who are they? Right, today is Wednesday. We were off today and ran a bunch of errands, did some house stuff. We're redoing our countertops um, and we had an issue with a leak underneath our sink. So thankfully Hunter handled that. Excuse how I look, I just got out of the shower. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about books. Lilo's coming down the stairs, so she's gonna be loud. Anytime I talk. <laughs> Uh, I'm drinking some tea and then I'm starting a new book. I finished um, Counting the Cost by Jill Duggar and it was phenomenal. Five stars. It was a great memoir. Um, I think it was really well written and really showed um, what it sounded like she was trying to show and what her message was with her memoir. Come down here then. So I really liked that. Um, I finished that I think yesterday. I believe and I started um what I showed you guys in earlier clips from today the book of cold cases um it's okay so far it's a mystery about this girl who literally runs she runs like a website or like a blog about cold cases and like it's like a forum thing and she had like something really traumatic happen to her where she almost died when she was little and they're they kind of allude to certain things and they haven't really fully said what happened yet but she gets the opportunity to interview this alleged um, murderer who is a woman who's referred to as like the lady killer. Um, and so you're flopping back and forth between perspectives of this, both women, the alleged murderer um, who was acquitted back in like the seventies. So she didn't get charged for anything, but everybody always assumed that she was guilty um, of killing her parents and like two other people. And so you don't know like, was she guilty was she not 
and that is what our main character is trying to find out and she's just interviewing her and so while she's doing that it seems like some things are being uncovered from her own past um kind of a typical-ish so far a mystery format um i've definitely read stuff like this before but i'm curious to see how it goes i'm only like 70 pages in so it definitely is more of like a slower burn mystery it's not like a thriller where it's like oh wow every five seconds um which that's fine i like those kind of books too but all that to say, I am right now reading To Shape a Dragon's Breath by Monique Black Goose. Um, this is an indigenous dragon academy style book. Um, think fourth wing, but make it indigenous and more uh, spiritual. So this is our book club pick for the month of March and I'm just starting it. And so far it is really great. It's got a really pretty map and it has a pronunciation guide and it's got all kind of cool stuff and it's very whimsical so far um definitely seems like there's a lot of like traditional aspects which is really cool for indigenous culture which i want to read more from authors that are indigenous so i'm excited um just getting started and can't wait to discuss this in our book club my book of the month pick for March. I am a little sad because it's a little squished. I'm not sad. But this, I really liked this cover um, and it is like a coming of age novel about a robot, which is kind of cool. So I'm intrigued by this and I thought it would be a good book of the month pick. So today is Friday and I'm wrapping up my reading vlog. Thank you guys if you have stayed along till the end. I feel like I've read a lot in this vlog and it's been a little bit chaotic, but I just wanted to kind of summarize everything um, with the last of my reading that I've done this week. I did start and finish the audiobook for Caraval. Um, I don't remember if I updated you guys on it or not. So this may be the first time I'm talking about it, but my thoughts are not great um i didn't like it and that i'm sad because most of the stuff in this book so or in this vlog so far has been really positive but i was not a fan of this one um to me like it's it's fantasy ish like i feel like the fantasy elements aren't super prevalent i think the concept is interesting like this magical like game competition kind of thing where you're granted one wish it's very like fairy tale-esque and the language is very fairy tale like and you're following these two sisters um and then one of them is captured and so the other one's just trying to find the other um she is basically betrothed in this like arranged marriage from her like super abusive and not good father um so they're also simultaneously trying to get out of that but it, it just doesn't the writing is very like plain i know this sounds awful but like i don't talk badly about books very often but i just did not like this i think if you're young and this is like your entry level into fantasy um maybe this is a good one to start with i don't know the, the writing was just not great to me i'm so sorry but it wasn't it wasn't bad and i think it, it was a really good well done it's like a contemporary um like more general fiction called sea change and it's about this girl who works in a, an aquarium and has formed a relationship with this octopus which i love animals and i love books that kind of tie in animals and animal science into their message and so our main character is kind of you know she's modern like in present day working at this aquarium she's struggling with a lot of things her relationships are kind of all falling apart um she has recently broke up with her boyfriend and her and her friends relation her close friends relationships kind of on the rocks um and so it's going back and forth between like present day and her past and things that have happened with her parents um, she has Korean immigrant parents um, and the struggles that they face and her father disappeared and is presumed dead as well. So she's carrying a lot of heavy grief with that. There is a lot of really good moments in this book. There's some funny things, there's some sad things, there's some hopeful things. Um, I think it has a lot of good conversations. So I would recommend this one. It was a pretty short audiobook as well. The narrator was good. 
Um, so yeah, I don't know what audiobook I'm going to do next, but I am still reading um, the book of cold cases that I mentioned earlier, and I'm still reading this for our book club to shape a dragon's breath. I'm about 20-25% through it, and it is really good. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it reminds me a lot of Fourth Wing, but in my opinion, it's already way better. It's like Fourth Wing if it was indigenous, um, because, you know, we're following our main character who is going to this, like, white, um, colonizer's school, um, and so she has her little dragon, and she's from the village that she's from, where they're very, she's still very educated, but everybody's assuming that she is not, um, but a lot of the ways that she was brought up, yes, I, by the way, yes, I'm having a cup of coffee and it's 8 p.m. Anyways, I don't have all my thoughts together, but so far this is really great. Um, would definitely recommend at this time. But thank you guys so much for watching today's vlog. I will see you next time. Bye.